What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, undefeated, rising, Mexican, welterweight, superstar, title contender, Virgil Ortiz Jr. puts on a spectacular performance against Igis Kavalaskis. After Virgil Ortiz Jr. was in a lot of trouble in the second round, looked like he was on the verge of hitting the canvas. If he did not hit the canvas, I personally thought it was a knockdown. Another fight in which uh, Igis Kavalaskis, the mean machine, he didn't get a, uh, he wasn't awarded a knockdown. He unofficially knocked down Terrence Crawford as well, uh, but he wasn't awarded a knockdown. And in the second round, this fight with Virgil Ortiz Jr., I thought he knocked down Virgil Ortiz in the second round. Nonetheless, uh, to my surprise, Virgil Ortiz Jr., he made adjustments in the fight. He started using his jab to control the distance and the range. Uh, Virgil Ortiz ended up dropping Igis Kavalaskis five times in this fight, twice with a jab to become 18-0, no losses, no draws, 18 wins by way of knockout. He is only 23 years of age. He stands at 5'10 with a 70-inch arm reach, okay? Uh, beautiful performance. I thought that Igis Kavalaskis would present a lot of trouble for Virgil Ortiz Jr., as he did, as I predicted. Uh, but Virgil Ortiz, to my surprise, made an adjustment, and he understood the distance, the range. He understood the counterpunch ability of Igis Kavalaskis. Igis Kavalaskis still hurt uh, Virgil Ortiz Jr. A, a few times in a few other rounds, but nonetheless, this is boxing, and he stands in the pocket, Virgil Ortiz. He's flat-footed. He stands in the pocket, but nonetheless, he was able to make adjustments and drop Igis Kavalaskis five times in this fight and ultimately get the... A stoppage victory, the knockout victory, okay? Um, in impressive fashion. He impressed me, to say the least. Um, but nonetheless, you know, uh, I believe there's some things Virgil Ortiz has to work on as he's only 23 years of age. But he's shown improvement every single fight out, okay? He's shown the, the ability to make adjustments in this fight. He's shown the ability to control the, the, the range and the distance of Igis Kavalaskis, something that Terrence Crawford struggled with he struggled to control the distance and the range of Igis Kavalaskis because of the timing of Igis Kavalaskis. Uh, the timing of Igis Kavalaskis uh, and his uh, ring IQ puts a lot of mental and physical pressure on his opponents uh, because he keeps you guessing. He, he keeps you thinking. And tonight he kept Virgil Ortiz Jr. thinking. But Virgil Ortiz Jr., his jab was beautiful tonight. Oh, man, it was amazing. And he was hiding the, the one, two. He was hiding the right hand. And he was hiding the hooks, okay? And he was going to the body. So I, I was highly impressed as I thought that I picked Igis Kavalaskis to possibly win this fight. I thought that uh, Igis, Kavalaskis, Igis Kavalaskis was a lot better than uh, people give him credit for. I didn't think it was an anomaly what took place with him and Terrence Crawford. And it showed tonight because he gave uh, Virgil Ortiz some, some problems tonight. He truly gave Virgil Ortiz some problems tonight. And this is a great learning lesson for Virgil Ortiz Jr. because... He's not the most athletically gifted boxer, but he has timing and timing beats power and timing beats speed. So if Virgil Ortiz can continue to work on his timing, continue to work on his uh, ability, his ring IQ and his ability to make adjustments. OK, uh, and he showed defensive prowess tonight. OK, now, now he's not the slickest guy. He's not going to give you a lot of head movement. He's not going to give you a lot of bending at the waist. He's not the slickest guy, but he kept a high guard up. You know, uh, he reminded me a lot of one of my favorite, if it's my personal favorite Mexican fighter in four division world champion Mexican superstar boxer Juan Manuel Marquez. That is my all time favorite Mexican fighter. Okay. And I showed it, I, it, it, I saw a lot of Marquez in Virgil Ortiz Jr. tonight. Okay. I saw a lot of four division world champion Mexican superstar boxer and stable mate. Uh, Mikey Garcia and Virgil Ortiz Jr. tonight. Okay, I saw I saw a lot of improvement on the part of Virgil Ortiz Jr. I saw adjustments made in the ring on the part of Virgil Ortiz Jr. And the fight of this magnitude is only going to uh, see him get better. Now he put himself in position to face undefeated uh, three division world champion, who's the former junior welterweight undisputed world champion, currently the WBO welterweight world champion, 
uh, who is widely considered by many to be number one pound for pound best fighters in the world, and Terrence Bud Crawford. Now, uh, we know Terrence Crawford has been ordered to face two-time welterweight world champion superstar boxer Showtime Sean Porter in his next fight, as they are currently in negotiations, and um, they uh, they have a 30-day deadline before that fight goes to a purse bid. So uh, Virgil Ortiz, he leapfrogged Sean Porter. As Sean Porter was the number one mandatory challenger for uh, Terrence Crawford, the WBO title. He's ranked number one. Then when Virgil Ortiz beat former WBO uh, junior welterweight world champion, superstar boxer Maurice Mighty Mo Hooker, uh, Virgil Ortiz leapfrogged Sean Porter for that number one position. He became the number one challenger as he was number two. But the WBO, they still ordered Terrence Crawford to face uh, Virgil, uh, excuse me, Showtime Sean Porter in his next fight. Terrence Crawford, 33 years of age. He'll be 34 next month. Uh, Terrence Crawford needs the absolute biggest names in the sport of boxing. Not that Virgil Ortiz Jr. is not a big name in the sport of boxing, but he's not a household name. He's not a, you know, he has a lot to build on. They have a common opponent in Maury, uh, in uh, Igis Kavalaskis now. They both stopped him. Uh, you know, he dropped uh, Igis Kavalaskis more times than Terrence Crawford did. Uh, he got, he dispatched him quicker than Terrence Crawford did. So, you know, uh, obviously there's going to be some comparisons but the triangle theory don't work, okay? How Terrence Crawford fared with Igis Kavalaskis. So the triangle theory just simply does not work in the sport of boxing, okay? Um, with that said, Terrence Crawford is very, very versatile. He makes a lot of adjustments. Uh, Terrence Crawford, you know, uh, can switch from orthodox to south four very fluidly. Uh, Terrence Crawford has extremely long arms at five foot eight with a 74-inch arm reach. Uh, you know, Igis Kavalaskis is a shorter guy, shorter arm reach. Um, uh, Virgil Ortiz has a long arm reach at 70 inches, but Terrence Crawford have a four inch arm reach advantage, more versatile, quicker, you know, uh, and he has more power, I believe, than uh, Virgil Ortiz Jr. So I think that's too big of a steep, too steep of a jump up for Virgil Ortiz Jr. I like this fight for Igas Kavalaskis for Virgil Ortiz Jr. I would like to see him in, you know, um, in a, you know, more fights like this Igis Kavalaskis fight, give him more time because, again, he's not the most athletically gifted guy. He's not the quickest guy, okay? So when you step up against a Terrence Crawford, uh, physical attributes, speed, and things of that nature is going to play a major part. And, um, you know, he just doesn't possess those things. Uh, so when you face a guy like possible, uh, who is his peers right now and in his class in uh, undefeated superstar rising title contender Jerron Boots Ennis who has all the tools the quick feet the quick hands the power uh he's he's slick he can bend at the hips he can he has head movement he can switch from orthodox to southpaw fluidly a lot of tools in the toolbox when you fighting and you Virgil Ortiz you fighting guys like that who can make adjustments okay and have a lot of tools in the toolbox it's going to take you to have great timing to be able to offset their great athletic abilities. And again, I saw it tonight. I saw the adjustment. I saw the timing. You know, I saw the jab. That's going to give a lot of people a lot of problems, but I think that he needs to work on it even more. I would like to see him against the, you know, um, the other, you know, Jamal James, you know, uh, you know, uh, possibly against, um, you know, guys of that magnitude, okay? Those are the guys I want to see Virgil Ortiz Jr. in with not going for Terrence Crawford. Now, I know you want a title opportunity. I uh, know you, you feel you're confident, but that's not a fight. After Jerron Ennis beat Sergey Lipinets, they started to state that that fight is four years off. Okay? So that means that they see the ability in Jerron Ennis they're not comfortable with. Okay? Not that Virgil Ortiz is avoiding any fighter. He made that abundantly clear when people stated that he was avoiding Terrence Crawford, that he didn't avoid Terrence Crawford. I just believe that it's going to take time for Virgil Ortiz Jr. to master his timing and master that jab and master distance. So when he's in with an athletic guy who's just far more athletically gifted than he is, but has a high ring IQ, has a lot of talent, who's slick, and his timing can play a major part, that's what kept Juan Manuel Marquez in the fight with Manny Pacquiao, who's more athletically gifted than him. It was the timing, okay? It was the timing for Juan Manuel Marquez that, that saw him beat, you know, legends, you know, in, in his career. That timing 
is key. And that's what Virgil Ortiz is going to have to get Mikey Garcia to beat Adrian Broner, to beat, uh, you know, um, Sergey Lipinets, to beat, you know, um, Robert Easter Jr., to beat the guys that um, Mikey Garcia beat, Orlando Salido. It was timing, okay? Mikey Garcia, again, is not the most athletically gifted guy, but guess what Mikey Garcia has? Great timing. And ultimately, that's what Virgil Ortiz Jr. is going to need. But great performance by Virgil Ortiz Jr. I was highly impressed. Uh, you know, um, he proved me co completely wrong. He made adjustments tonight. He used his jab to control the distance. He he controlled the timing. Uh, he was counterpunching a counterpuncher. I'm highly impressed. So he got a dominating performance. Can't wait to see what's next for him. That's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue, Blue Bud Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Find me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV, all one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share these videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace. Hey, this is Ebony Bridges, Blonde Bomber, and you're watching Blue Blood Sports TV.